The next item of business this afternoon is Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body Questions. And question number one is Ruth Maguire. To ask the Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body what consideration it gives to inclusive communication and what improvements it can make to parliamentary broadcasts in this regard. Andy Whiteman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The corporate body is committed to making its communications as accessible as possible and regularly looks at a range of uh, technology to make improvements to parliamentary broadcasts. Currently, we use YouTube technology in which we caption a number of video archives using the text from the official report. This began in September 2013 with First Minister's questions. Uh, the service was then extended to include general questions and ministerial statements from September 2014, and topical and portfolio questions uh, were added in November 2016. These videos can be viewed on YouTube the following day with this text added, and where there's a particular demand, uh, we also provide this facility for chamber uh, debates. We also caption all short video packages and video clips for social media channels. And in addition, where possible, we provide simultaneous interpretation of parliamentary business into British Sign Language and other languages on request. The corporate body also provides a range of information resources, such as British Sign Language videos. Ruth McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the member for that answer. I wonder if the parliamentary um, corporate body would consider subtitling all debates in the chamber. I appreciate that they provide um, subtitles and sign language on some specific debates but it would feel really important when they're doing such a good job on all other areas at providing an inclusive service that we made the debates we had and the questions accessible to all people. Andy White. Um, yes I mean the Parliament has been considering this which is why it started in September 2013 with the captioning uh, and in 2013 the corporate body did two you, uh, undertake a feasibility study on providing subtitles across all in-house distribution, including live streaming. Um, following a consultant's report, however, the uh, option of re-speaking, that is somebody sitting, listening to what's being said, and re-speaking it into a, a machine, a computer with voice recognition for their voice, that was identified as providing the greatest accuracy, about 90% accuracy. Uh, cost for this system, which requires technical infrastructure and additional staff, were, however, considered uh, prohibitive. Um, and when the corporate body stands up here and says that Parliament's keeping things under review, we gen genuinely are keeping things under uh, review. Uh, one of the corporate body's contractors, a company called Groovy Gecko, um, has recently carried out a pilot with the UK Parliament um, uh, to look at simultaneous uh, voice recognition and that system was only 60 to 70 percent accurate and I'm sure all members would agree that services like this which are communicating what is being said in Parliament have to avoid errors um, and they have to avoid, avoid obviously particularly embarrassing uh, errors um, and often to get the required level of accuracy requires a lot of manual input and to date those uh, costs are deemed to be uh, prohibitive but as I said at the beginning Parliament is continuing to look at this area. If uh, technology is evolving very, very fast, uh, and we'd love to be able to provide more subtitling across all parliamentary output as soon as the technology and costs allow it. Question number two, Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Parliament corporate body whether it will provide staff to assist cross-party groups set up equipment at meetings held in the Parliament after 6 p.m. Can I thank the member for the question and say to her that cross-party groups are not a formal part of parliamentary business and the corporate body's responsibilities to ensure the provision of resources for parliamentary purposes, they don't extend to cross-party groups. Section 6 of the Code of Conduct for members of the Scottish Parliament makes it clear that CPGs may use the Parliament's facilities only where these are available for public use and the groups may not draw on the resources of parliamentary staff to service meetings other than to book the meeting rooms themselves. On that basis, staff are not made available after 6pm to provide assistance to the cross-party groups. However, our porters are in the building until 6pm. To be helpful, they may provide some limited assistance to MSP members of CPGs, but only if time allows as parliamentary business and official events do take precedence in the building. Christine Graham. 
Well, uh, <clears throat> it's a very disappointing but not unexpected answer. Uh, can I say, uh, not for the first time, obviously now not for the last time, the cross-party group on animal welfare has been without audiovisual equipment despite requisitioning it some months before and despite that being confirmed. And it's all been highly embarrassing with nobody around to either bring it in or to assist in setting it up. So if I can't have help after 6 p.m., who keeps a log of these requests for the audiovisual equipment and who maintains the data on saying, yes, we've said we will provide it and set it up, even if thereafter they can't provide backup? Kessia Dugdale. If I could say to the member that I accept that the work of cross-party groups is exceptionally important in this building, and I tear a number myself, but that is the rules as they're laid out in the Code of Conduct, and if the member is very keen to see that change and to see enhanced support for cross-party groups, then she should seek to amend Section 6 of the Code of Conduct, and she can do that by first approaching the Standards Committee. I would say to her further, though, that I'm sorry that her... Um, cross-party group has had a negative experience of trying to use the audiovisual commitment, uh, especially if she's been promised that in advance. And if she wants to share her uh, specific experience of that with a member of the corporate body, we will look to find out why she wasn't at the very least advised as to why that audio and visual equipment wasn't provided on the day, because I do accept that that was uh, inconvenient and to an extent embarrassing for the member. Supplementary from Rhoda Grant. Just a quick supplementary, presiding officer. I hadn't realised that there was a six o'clock deadline and I would have to say that oh, I'm, I'm chairing one cross-party group. We needed a visual equipment phone the help desk and that was delivered straight away by a porter. So uh, that was someone obviously working outside their contract and doing a special favour. So I would be grateful if you would pass on my thanks to them. Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, and I think that gratitude would be exceptionally welcomed by the staff, and the member will know that um, throughout the building, the staff do go above and beyond to do whatever they can to facilitate the business within the building, and that does extend to cross-party groups where those resources are available. Where the conflict arises is where the Parliament is particularly busy with official events, and that might detract porters from their ability to assist cross-party groups, which is why some might experience better uh, experiences of using the equipment than others, and that's entirely down to the nature of parliamentary business. That concludes Parliament, uh, sorry, SPCB questions and we will move on to the next item of business. I'll give a short time for people to change their seats.